Thanks for the support as a channel member, Austin Hartman. Yeah, Manchester City away on the first day of the new season is about as hard as it comes, Mrs. Wormuth. <laughs> I d <laughs> yeah, I, d I did see that you were looking to sell the club in the summer. I'll level with you. I thought I'd be retired by now too. So, so to come crashing back down to earth like this, especially after the World Club Cup and the Community Shield, I feel like we've got a lot to prove today. Let's do three in a row. Hello and welcome to part 172 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games of the new Premier League season. We're away against Manchester City and at home against Watford. If you missed the transfer special yesterday, you missed it. Not yesterday, the day before yesterday. You missed us going out of the Club World Cup in the first round. You missed us losing in the Community Shield. You missed us apparently signing nobody this summer. Doesn't tell you the whole story. We just did our business early um, with Kovalik, Marrero and Alpish all coming in. And a couple of youngsters stepping up into the first team squad as well. We also sold some established talent. Uh, Francisco left the club um, and uh, Diaz left the club in actual money deals. And quite a few players who were here last year have gone out on loan. And some of last year's loanees are now back in the club proper. Money is fine. We've got loads of money. Just nobody we can buy that will improve the squad. And this is the team that we're taking to Manchester City in the hope that it's going to be good enough to beat them. Starting over Jovanovic in midfield, not ideal, but the other option is Diego Perez or a still pretty unproven Jamie Much with the injuries to Kleber and Christensen causing early problems and making me think, was I right to sell Diaz? Long term, I think I was, because Christensen, I think, is going to be awesome. It's just unfortunate that he's timed his injury the way he has. So, the team for the Manchester City game, Perez in goal. A back four of the returning Kovalik alongside Elias Abagai and Vinicius Antonio. The best back four we've ever had. Jovanovic and McKenna in midfield. The one positive about this is it does get McKenna back to playing as the box-to-box -box midfielder, which is what I'm keen for Christensen to come in and do as that deep line playmaker as well. McKenna as a box-to-box -box midfielder is a proper game-changing player. He just can't play there when Kleber's in the side and Kleber kind of jumps ahead of him. Um, new captain Ian on the left-hand side, Park on the right, and then the one-to-way strike partnership of Juan Jose and Veloso up front. Neither of them have scored in the uh, in the preseason shenanigans. They both still want to leave the club, and we've got Jovanovic and Marcelo and new boy Adrian Daly all breathing down their necks, looking for an opportunity to just come in and take their spots if they don't start this season the way they ended last season. So. Potentially a little bit of a turbulent time here at home after an unexpected Champions League final defeat, which of course was to Manchester City, the team we play now. And um, but we can uh, we can steady the ship and prove a lot of doubters wrong with a victory here today. It starts us off on the on the front foot in the right way there, doesn't it? But I think we're probably hoping for a lot. I, th I think we'd all be pretty happy if we can come away with a draw and uh, at least say, well, they couldn't beat us. Could they? First day of the season, with all that stuff going wrong, they couldn't beat us. Veloso, trying to play it forward for Juan Jose, but he uh, he can't quite chase onto it, and it's cleared as far as Abagai. He plays the ball over the top. Veloso is in, and, I mean, first big chance of the season for Veloso, and rather than thundering it into the far bottom corner the way he normally would, it's rolled into the hands of the goalkeeper, and I really, really hope it's not a sign of things to come, because if Juan Jose and Veloso get, get ruined by the frankly ridiculous player morale system in FM21, where we've got two players who are playing regularly for a Champions League finalist team who've just won the Premier League twice in a row, and we've got one of them who wants to go to Nîmes and the other one who wants to go to Norwich, and that ruins them. Be furious. Veloso misses again. It's totally unrealistic for these two players to want the two moves they want. If it was Real Madrid or Barcelona or someone like that, I would get it. It's who the teams are that is derailing them, that is utterly infuriating. And it's uh, it's got to change for FM22. That's a, I thought that was a good tackle from Antonio, but apparently not. And but yeah, the, the player morale system needs to be tweaked in a number of ways. Um, you, this, this player disruption nonsense has got to go, um, or at least in its current form. It's got to be more realistic to how things actually work because... Oh, if they want money, they're two rich clubs who are in. If they want money, we'll give them the money. 
but we can't negotiate a contract with them because they're unhappy. So it's ridiculous. You've got two players who presumably want to leave for money. We've got the money to offer them. But like we saw with Kovalik, it was the exact same situation we had with him. We couldn't negotiate a contract with him the last year he was at the club because he was unhappy. He goes away for 10 months. We bring him back and now we can offer him 220 grand a week. And all of a sudden he's earning loads more money and he's happy. If that's what we have to do with Aloso and Juan Jose, it's absurd. But also morale in general has too much of an impact on the game, I think. Um, that's not been given as a penalty. I was convinced we were going a goal down there, but it's actually a free kick just outside the area, which does give us a little bit of a, a ray of light in this game. We're not behind yet. Veloso picks the ball up from the Abagai clearance. That's good work from Veloso. Juan Jose is in the middle. Ian is joining him in there as well. If Veloso can get the crossover, and we are in a good opportunity here. Antonio presumably just hit his cross straight into the first defender because the highlight just stopped as he was about to get the cross in. Um, we approach the 70 minute mark. It's still nil nil. And I got a lot of stick from you lot. The substitutions I made at this stage against Manchester City in the Champions League final. So I've got to behave myself here, haven't I? You know, though, I really want to get Adrian Daly onto the pitch, but there's not really any way to do it, I don't think, unless we take off Veloso. That's the only like for like change. I'm not taking off Veloso. He's been one of our better attackers so far today. I think we are going to take off Juan Jose, though. Move uh, Jovanovic forward. Perez can come on and play in midfield for the last 20 minutes or so. We're going to bring Primus on to play right back. Remember, Primus is either footed. So although he's always been a left back for us previously, with Kovalik back, there's no reason why Primus couldn't be a right back for us just as easily. Um, so Primus will come on and play at right back and we'll leave it there. We'll do our final change in a few minutes time once we've decided whether it's going to be daily or madness um, or whatever other options we've got down on that bench right goal kick with Perez it goes to Abagai who's playing it forward looking for a new captain Ian um, who picks the ball up nicely plays it forward to Veloso and now Jovanovic plays the ball into Veloso Veloso's in here surely Veloso scores and he does I mean being unhappy last year didn't stop him he got 57 goals last year despite being unhappy all year um, and it looks like he's still capable of doing it even when he's got a grumpy on the big question mark for me at the moment is over Juan Jose um, because Jose didn't play that kind of pass at any point in the game. And that's normally what we see from Jose constantly. It might be time for Jovanovic to step up and for us to take the Juan Jose money. Right, final substitution. We don't have anyone to bring on for a very tired McKinna. Um, so Marcelo comes on for Park as the final change. And Daly has to wait a little bit longer to make his Premier League debut. And McKinna has to just struggle on in midfield without Kleber in there alongside him. He's doing all of the midfield running today, but with a couple of minutes left on the clock, it's still 1-0 to home. And I said we could go out there and send a message today. And I think you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, message sent. Manchester City nil, home one. Certainly in domestic football, we are the best team. We just need to be able to do that to the same teams in other competitions. You've seen us flop against other Premier League sides in the last two episodes against Manchester United um, in the World Club Cup and the Community Shield, Manchester City in the Champions League. We come back to the Premier League. We know how to win this. We've proven we know how to win this. And uh, we're going to go and win it again, I hope. Let's go play whichever team not as good as us we're going to play next. Boys and girls, we're going to start sending messages to these unhappy boys. Uh, Voloso is... Um, Rested. We're dropping Veloso for this game. It's Watford. It should be fine. I want another try of Jovanovic playing as the advanced forward. I'm trying to prepare for life after these two, potentially. Um, I, I imagine the long term is Jovanovic as the support striker and then either Marcelo or Daly as the more attacking player. But I think Jovanovic is the closest one to be ready to step in as a regular starter. When he played that game as an advanced forward in the Champions League last year, and scored five goals. It just sticks in my head, and I've never really used him there in the Premier League. So we're going to give him a game there today and have a look at him. Jamie Much comes into midfield to play alongside McKenna with Kleber and Christensen and Figuera, all still injured. Poor old Adrian Daly has just signed his new contract on £79,000 a week, and there's not even room on the bench for him. We're operating on a smaller squad this year, but every single member of the squad is Premier League like Champions League quality, probably, 
and we'll be disappointed when they don't get onto the bench for these matches. But it's going to happen because we have a very strong squad now. I think any other any other version of home in history, Daly has been a star of the team for the last two years at this point. That was an interesting attempt at a through ball there. If they had their own version of someone like Veloso, um, he's in there and scores. But luckily, they don't, and we get away with it. Um, and it's with Kovalik at left back, playing it across to McKinna, who no doubt enjoying being back to playing as the box-to-box -box midfielder again. Slots it through beautifully to Jovanovic. And Jovanovic has grabbed his goal. It's a lovely piece of football from McKinna and a very, very tidy finish from Jovanovic, who, based on that moment and every other moment we've had seen him playing him as an advanced forward, he might well be ready, boys and girls, which means if we get another big offer in for one of these strikers, when we've got Marcelo and Daly knocking around as well, in the interests of club morale, we'll say it quietly because we don't want to invite offers. But I think for like £150 million pound plus, Van Jose and or Veloso potentially could be out of the door, which is an unthinkable sentence to say based on the end of last season. But, you know, there's no point in having unhappy players here. That's not how you win Premier Leagues. I did have a look. The biggest transfer in Premier League history, either in or out, is 184 million. So I think if we get 185 million, make it a British record transfer, I think we'd probably take that. And McKenna's just scored as well. He's having a cracking game, playing as the box to box midfielder. Claver's probably watching on from his sickbed, wondering, uh, wondering what this potentially means for him with Much and Christensen again being pretty close to ready to play in that playmaker spot and then both being natural there. And it being a strong position for both of them, it does mean that rather than, oh, what a goal from Vinicius Antonio, he's got Primus breathing down his neck and has decided to show me that, yeah, he's uh, he's still pretty useful. Of course, another one who could play in midfield um, if we uh, if we chose to play in there. If competition got too strong at right back, he can move further forward. And that's on his weak foot he's done that. What a goal from Vinicius Antonio. I tell you what, we've got lots of options in lots of positions. It's just very exciting. This is, and we've talked about it before, and I know people will say, well, it's not because you've not won the Champions League, but I have no doubts at all. This home squad is the best squad I've ever had in Football Manager, and I'm so double extra proud of the fact that we've done it by only signing 18-year-olds. It is certainly, I think there's going to be a lasting impact on my transfer policies going forward based on what we've done in this save and the longevity of the players that we've had in this save. We've had players who come into the team young, stay for a long, long time. We've had to show faith in some players that we perhaps would have signed a player over the top of before and they've paid it back and then some. I think you're going to see a very different a, a very different transfer policy um, when we get into non-league to legend for FM22 based on what I've learned from doing this Youth Academy Challenge. It's worth doing challenges, boys and girls. Who knew? And we are top of the league as it stands as well. And we are playing very, very well. And uh, I mean, probably some question marks when we dropped Veloso. But 3-0 up after 20 minutes. Remove your question marks. New Captain Ian. How much longer is that going to be his full name? New Captain Ian. Um, trying to grab himself a goal as well. But I mean, he's probably going to be quite alarmed by how well McKenna's playing. Because if McKenna does nail down the box-to-box -box midfield spot with Kleber and available, it means Ian all of a sudden is uh, has got some serious competition from Kleber. He was already facing a battle this year with Figuera and Madness, both pushing for, for starting spots. If Kleber's in the mix as a winger again this year, um, Ian Ian's going to have to be on top, top form all year, on, all year long. Although I imagine, based on the contract negotiations we had with him in the summer, when he was trying to get me to commit to playing him as an advanced forward, He's probably looking at the Veloso and Juan Jose uh, uh, situation, thinking, well, if we lose one or both of them, I'll play up front with Jovanovic. I'm a striker. Ian, you're not a striker. But he thinks he is. So I think we've got contingencies. Let me know down in the comments. Do you sell? I know the I know the the general consensus has been don't sell, keep them, they'll come around eventually, which Park did, Kovalik didn't, and they're now both playing happily for the club a couple of years on. Um, but Veloso's been unhappy for more than a year now. Um, I don't know how long we string it out for. Do we just bin him off and bring him back the way we have with Kovalik, which seems to have been a quicker way to solve the problem. Uh, right, Ian's going to come off for madness here. Triple change, easy peasy. 
uh, Perez, Madness, and Primus all getting a nice little run out today as well. All eyes on Madness because that left wing spot is hotly contested this season. Um, and he needs to stake a claim while Figuera is injured uh, because it wants Figuera's back. If he jumps, if, Maquette, if Madness hasn't shown me that it should be him, he might be struggling for a bench spot. Um, it was a lovely through ball there, um, which was it Jovanovic who was on the end of it, who didn't quite have a finish. But it was a lovely, lovely pass from Madness. That's something we don't really see from Ian or Kleber. Madness, very much a different kind of, of winger. We've got three very different kind of left wingers there. Um, and Figuera is very similar to what we have with Park and realistically probably is competing more with Park um, than with the guys over on the left. Because I think if we want an inside forward or an inverted winger on the left, Madness is natural at it and very, very good. Oh, this is a good team. Two wins. Forget what happened last year. Forget any transfer window disappointment there might have been. Home are back, boys and girls, and we are going to win every single football match this season without conceding a goal. That's the plan, and I'll prove it to you because we'll be back in the next episode with our return to the Champions League, which, of course, we are going to win this year. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.